Carl Fabergé was the son of Russian jeweler Gustav Fabergé, who founded the House of Fabergé. In 1860, Gustav retired, leaving the business in the hands of one of his trusted craftsmen until Carl was ready to take control. In 1882, with his training complete, Carl was ready and was awarded the title of Master Goldsmith. Fabergé's amazing craftsmanship and attention to detail caught the eye of the royal family. And in 1885, Tsar Alexander III commissioned an Easter egg for the Empress Maria. So impressed were the royals with the gift, a yearly tradition was born. Each egg brought more elaborate designs, moving parts, swinging doors, one surprise on top of another. And although Fabergé became known for the imperial Easter eggs, the company kept busy year-round, producing everything from silverware to fine jewelry, becoming the largest jewelry company in all of Russia. When Tsar Nicholas II took the throne, he added a second egg to the yearly order, the one for his mother, and now one for his Tsarina Alexandra. But it all came to a tragic halt in 1917 with the Russian Revolution. And in 1918, the House of Fabergé was taken by the Bolsheviks. Karl Fabergé had been lucky enough to leave St. Petersburg on the last diplomatic train out and eventually made his way to Germany. Karl died in Switzerland in 1920, but the name of Fabergé lived on. Karl's son, Eugene, and his brother, Alexander, opened Fabergé at Seine in Paris in 1924. And across the sea in the U.S., an American industrialist with Russian roots opened a company to manufacture perfumes and toiletries named Fabergé Inc. In time, a financial settlement was made with the actual Fabergé family, and Fabergé Inc. went on producing the best-selling cologne in the world at that time, Brut for Men. And that's History 101.